What is it? What is it? Can I trust you? <laughs> the apps, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just like you woke me up to tell me this. I. <laughs> I'm too tired for this. Uh, can this wait until t until morning? Like I'm I'm tired. Like let me go to bed. <laughs> can I trust you? <sighs> I had an idea. I don't know if that turned out decent or not. So I hope I did a good job. Hello everyone. Let's get into the video. All right, so this is a movie review or a film review between Red Sparrow and Atomic Blonde. I was thinking, I've had this idea for many months now. I was like, how am I gonna do this? I, I had this thought of like, I've had this thought of comparing those two movies because they're both very similar and they both came out or they both were released around like the same time. Atomic Blonde came out in 2017 and then Red Sparrow came out in 2018. So the following year. Let me just give you a little bit of backstory of the first experience I had watching these two films. I recently watched them to prepare for this video and also made several notes. So with both these movies, right? I was never planning on seeing these two movies again because the first time I watched these, it scarred me. You know, it's so interesting because when the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, this is so uneasy. I, I don't like this. This is making me so uncomfortable. Still have, this, still have those same feelings when I watch this, when I watch these two movies again. But it was different because I had like a different mindset and I actually paid attention. So I kind of knew what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, both of those movies are kind of, there are a lot to absorb and figure out what's going on. They're both like that. So this is gonna be more of like a compare and contrast, I guess. And we will find out at the end of this video, which movie is better in the personal opinion. We are going to start off with Red Sparrow. And I made it all special, you see? Oh. Damn, like these notes look kind of good. Like, I'm like low key, like kind of proud of myself. I don't know. So, Red Sparrow. This movie was released in March 2018. Oh yeah, this this movie is adapted from a book by Jason Matthews. Both of these films are adaptations. So this Red Sparrow is adapted from a book, and Atomic Blonde is adapted from a comic book, which I'll get into later. But yeah, so the main characters in this film are Dominika Igorova, Nathan, uh, the American man, and Dominika's uncle, Vanya. Those are pretty much the main characters. Okay, also as a preface, let me say this. So both of these movies contain a lot of um, inappropriate content, very violent content. I'm gonna try and make it as PG or as clean as I can. I'm gonna just try and summarize this movie really quick. Red Sparrow is about Dominica. She's a dancer, but she she's a dancer, but suddenly she cannot be a dancer anymore because her leg gets broken on accident, which she later finds out is not an accident. So then her uncle, who is the head of the SVR, and he hires her to undergo this special 
to undergo this special training to go to the state school four. And this is where she'll undergo training to become a sparrow, master manipulators, and people that are skilled at like um, sex stuff. So basically she goes to the school and she is a witness at this horrific site and her and her uncle tells her you we can't have any witnesses at this scene so you either become a sparrow or you die and she like doesn't really have a choice so she joins the school and she learns like a whole bunch of like extreme stuff the head of the school is telling all the students that your body belongs to the state and you must do whatever it takes to get the mission done so you have to push yourself beyond than what is normally accepted. I'm pretty sure I described that, okay, yeah. So she learns how to pick locks, how to like human bodily functions. Yeah, the, there's like a whole bunch of stuff that happens in school that I'm not really gonna go into detail about cause it's not appropriate. So then she's doing all this stuff at the school and she's like, doing quite well but not ex not to the level where it is expected of her like she's doing the way that she wants to do stuff so basically she leaves the school she's employed by the state and she's sent to find this american man and there's she's supposed to find out information about him and retrieve information from the american agent to get information for the russian state and basically what they're telling her is you have to gain his trust. What she later finds out, you know what? Do I have feelings for this person? Which they would like to lead him into thinking that, but then he's already like, I already know what you're trying to do. So don't even apply it. Don't even try it with me. And it's just like a long, complicated situation throughout the entire movie. Oh yeah, another thing, another thing. So after Dominika is sent home to Moscow to see her mom because she's been kicked out of the school and Macron and like the head of the Russian government is like, we'll send you home and we're gonna send you off on this mission. If you're able to do this, then we will provide for you. Then we will provide for you and your family. Wait, let me actually like give you like a re Am I gonna do reenactment? Sure, what the heck. So she comes home from, so she comes home from the school and her mother is so glad to see her. She's like, oh, how was your time? And she's like, let me tell you what I learned at school, mom. And she's like, let me, oh, let me hear all about it. And it went something like this. I'm so glad to see you home. How was your time at the school, huh? Did you learn anything? Did you make any new friends? Did you get along with your teachers? Oh, it was a lot. I learned a lot, met a lot of people, and also got beat up a lot. Oh, okay. Did you, what else did you do? Well, I learned how to pick locks. I learned how to beat men up. I learned how to seduce mans. And I also got... I also got naked in front of the whole entire class to show that my body is a part of the state and I don't own my body anymore. Dang, he did that? Ooh. And they let that happen? Girl. Yeah, like the uncle recruited me and it was... Hmm. See, this is the reason why... I wanted to keep your uncle away from you because he was mad creepy when you were a child. He was always looking up at you, eyeing you. And that's why you didn't see much of him when you were a child. See, this is like, this is a bad idea from the beginning. You shouldn't have gone with him. Dang. Oh, I guess I can kind of see that now. Okay. So what are you going to do now? I'm sorry, mama. I'll have to leave pretty soon. I can only see you for this amount of time. I hope to see you soon. All right, please send me letters or call me because I miss you. Bye. Okay. 
yeah i'll be sure to do that so yeah it went a little something like that and it only goes downhill from there folks so she encounters a lot of these men that are really trying it with her and she's like i'm not having it of course not they also find out that there is a mole within the russian government no the head of the russian government and then uncle vanya give this mission to dominica to find who the mole is within the russian government to make this quite short so the rest of the movie is dominica and nathan trying to find out who the mole is and they find out who the mole is at the very end of the movie and the mole finds dominica and he tells her that he is the mole and he says you can either turn me in and you'll be and i would be crowned as a war hero which would be like give her like a way out so that she can live with her mother safely but you know what i think she was one step ahead of him because she framed her uncle to be the mole which she really wasn't and throughout the movie she planted evidence in certain spots in different scenes from opening up a bank account in his name to leaving um shot glasses or whiskey glasses i'm not really sure what they're called with his finger with his fingerprints on it in different areas in different rooms and so the russian like the head the head of the russian government encounters uncle vanya about this and he's like boy i know you've been trifling you mole you ratting us out to the americans and he's like she put me up to this i just know it I know it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. They, the head of the Russian government arrests creepy Uncle Vanya and they torture him. They beat him up so bad. And there's one point where Dominica is with Nathan and like the Americans and with the Americans because she wouldn't tell the information to anybody else. She only would only speak to the head of the Russian government. So he only knew who it was. So then the mole is blindfolded about, they're at this airport and they're about to meet up with each other. And then, okay, let's see who the mole is. And it turned out to be her uncle. And that's when they had that exchange of her uncle finally comes up to her and says something like, wow, you beat me, you really beat me. And then he gets shot like two seconds later. So then she leaves and she has, and she is crowned a war hero in Russia and she lives happily ever after with her mother, which is great. And it's actually kind of like revenge because in the big picture, her uncle is really the one who got her into the situation in the first place. Like if he hadn't have told her about that, about how the rush, about her dancer, they pair, that they purposely tried to break her leg in the first place, and if she just would have like believed that lie, that it was an accident the whole time, then she wouldn't have gone to that school. She would not have learned all that information. And she would not have met up with the American agent, Nathan. Yeah, so it's like really, the whole movie is like getting back at her uncle because her uncle did her so dirty. Was tortured, she was beat up for no reason. All because her uncle was like, I'm gonna give you a choice. You can either die or become a sparrow. And then you'll be, and a bunch of these dangerous missions that are gonna risk, that you will be risking your life for. So basically, yeah, that's how the movie ends. To summarize it as short as possible. Here are some key like movie elements that really stood out to me or movie elements that are most prominent. So the cinematography in this, probably the most memorable shots in this film were the scenes in the Bolshoi with the dancing and her performing, Dominique performing. Screenplay, dialogue, it's kind of forgettable. There aren't really any memorable lines. It's all very toned down. It's very, it's a very serious movie. I mean, as it should be, it's like dealing with like a whole bunch of very dark elements and ideas. The acting, I will say, is pretty good with uh, the Russian accent by Jennifer Lawrence. Okay, so yeah, that was Red Sparrow. Let's go ahead and move on to Atomic Blonde. Atomic Blonde is based on a graphic novel called The Coldest City, written by Anthony Johnston. So this movie is a historical based movie. It's based in Berlin. It takes place during the Cold War. 
specifically in 1989, around the time where the Berlin is demolished and West and East Berlin are united. The main characters in this film are Lorraine Broughton, who is portrayed by Charlize Theron, and David Percival, portrayed by James McAvoy. I will say with Atomic Blonde, this film explored more into different elements of a film. The cinematography, colors, visual effects, a screenplay and dialogue. The music is very well chosen for this film. Since it's taking place in Berlin, Germany, a lot of the music is 80s music, like 80s pop, 80s rock. Some of it is in some of it is in English and some and some of it is in German. And it's very well placed in different scenes of action and different scenes of where it might be like a club or just people casually talking and it's in the background or if it's like rising up to get to a certain point of action. Atomic Blonde is similar in the sense of the plot with Red Sparrow because both films, the main characters are trying to find a mole within an agency. So throughout this whole movie, they're trying to find this list that has a whole bunch of agents names on it that are either like double agents or people that are like up to no good and like a lot of people are trying to find this list. And there was also this other person called Spyglass and he is, I feel like we, he really has no business being in the movie cause like you just brought into there, brought into the movie for like, I feel like he was just there for no reason other than the fact that he memorized the entire list and people were just trying to find him for his knowledge. The whole movie is very, very violent and very aggressive. It's one of those movies where I'm just like, it's just so violent. It's just so hard to watch, especially for me. I don't really like those prolonged scenes of violence. It's just, it's so hard to watch. I don't know. That's something that I personally didn't really connect with about the film, but she was trying to save her life and this of the and spyglass's life was well, she was trying to escape the country and she was trying to help him get out of the country but oh no 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 yeah also like david he's mad trifling and he is so he curses a lot he's not a very good person at all but he's very smart though which is not a very com very good combination if you're really smart or you're really mean. Not a good combination at all. So the movie ends around the time the Berlin Wall is demolished. And to make a long story short, Lorraine finds out that Percival or David is the mole and he is Satchel. He is the code, or she finds out earlier that the code name of the double agent is named Satchel. And she finds out later that David is Satchel and then she kills him done and over with after she kills Percival she's on break and the chief or C gives her a break you know what you're on break until next year you're not we're not gonna give you any more missions until three days later she goes to Paris and then she finds Bremovich for some reason she meets him and she's like, I don't even know why she's in the first place. I don't know, like, he's like an evil man. Like, what did you think was gonna happen? So he basically tries to leave the room, gives, so the list of like all these names on this no good list, they're on the special watch. And I guess she's there to give it to him, but that wasn't gonna happen, nah. You know what's really funny? He was preparing for her to be there. And so then he ex he's about to exit the room and then these three guys come in and it's just her by herself, right? And this guy, there's one guy that sucks out a body bag, like a black bag and he just sets it down. And then there's two other guys that are there to like, we're gonna kill you. And I'm like, you guys are really confident to thinking that you're gonna kill her and then you're just gonna put her dead body in this bag, uh, in this bag. 
one of the scenes in this movie is a very prolonged fight scene and it seems like it is a continuous shot and it's just Lorraine beating these men up. It is one of the most violent scenes I've ever watched in a movie. That, that was a scene I was talking about earlier where it's incredibly violent. That's the scene I was talking about. And she beats up all of them and she escapes from that fight battered and bruised, but she's alive. But Spyglass did not make it. She was trying to protect him. That didn't work out because Percival plotted against her and talked to Bremovich and agreed that he wasn't gonna let Spyglass live. So then he shot him unbeknownst to Lorraine because she didn't know at this point that Percival was the double agent. So basically fast forward to the ending scene where it's just her and these three guys and that one guy with the body bag expecting her to be dead. Huh, that didn't happen. So she emerges from that battle victorious and she kills all four of those guys. And yeah, that's basically how the movie ends. Not really happy ending and not really a sad ending either. Some notes about the movie as a whole. The cinematography is very, very captivating. There are, very, there are many scenes where how a scene is shot is very interesting to look at. See, there's a lot of movement going around, definitely for sure. The screenplay in this movie is very clever and very interesting. The characters are able to show the personality through interactions between other characters. And that's what I really liked about Atomic Blonde is that how the character is perceived by other characters is through their dialogue. There are a whole lot of other things I could go way into more detail about, but for the sake of this video being short, I'm not gonna do that to you guys. I'm not gonna do that to the viewers. Also, I'm not at that level where I can say you guys because they don't have an audience. Like who's gonna watch this? So overall with both films, Red Sparrow and Atomic Blonde, I will say the plot in the story in Red Sparrow is very captivating and intriguing. I would say more so than Atomic Blonde. The acting in that film, the acting in that film is evenly distributed between most of the characters. Whereas Red Sparrow, the stronger acting comes from Jennifer Lawrence. Really not impressive with the other characters in that film. I mean, personally, at least that's what I think. The music in Atomic Blonde is a lot better compared to Red Sparrow. In Red Sparrow, there aren't really a whole lot of noticeable um, background music changes. The music for Red Sparrow is mainly orchestral. So it's just, re it really blends in with the film very well. However, with Atomic Blonde, you can definitely tell the movie has its transitions between each of the songs that are chosen for each specific scene, which I thought was very creative. Now, if we're looking at entertainment value, I will say Atomic Blonde is very entertaining. I will say Red Sparrow does have its slow moments at times. That's There's some points where, oh, what's going on here? I'm not sure how the story is progressing here. Atomic Blonde, I feel like it's very fast paced. All right, so overall, between both of these films, Red Sparrow and Atomic Blonde, looking at all these elements, acting, entertainment value, plot, story, directing style, uh, visual effects, cinematography, screenplay and dialogue. Oh, music, music for sure. I will say in the personal opinion, out of the both of these films, I think Atomic Blonde is the better film. Yeah. yeah, so if you saw these films, what did you think about the both of these? Both of these films. Well, I will say they're both, you know, I'm kind of conflicted because both of these films contain a lot of inappropriate and sexual content and none of the, not, none of that's good. So it's kind of weird for me to say, oh, this movie is good, but it has all this bad content in it, which I really had the idea of this video with the two, with these two films in mind because of how similar they are. 
Both films are thriller slash suspense, and they're both considered spy movies. I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I got most, if not everything. All right, so that concludes the Atomic Blonde versus the Red Sparrow review movie. Movie review. If you got this far, I hope that intro did not totally throw you off. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of creative. So I thought I'd try something new. I don't know. But yeah, I will see you in the next video and I'm going to go to bed. Not here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.